Hello everyone! Happy Monday! Thank you so much for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery, and I am here every weeknight at 9.30 p.m. Central, where we relax and craft and work on a project together. And we've been working through Finish It Fall, <laughs> where we can just finish up some of our unfinished projects. And I am working on the hand-stitched project by Blair from Wise Craft Quilts from Wisecraft, from her Wisecraft Quilts book yet. So here is the project. I am hand stitching the applique, the hand stitching the English paper piecing to this back fabric, and then I'm going to turn it into a pillow. So that is the plan. I'm gonna continue stitching tonight. Uh, and <laughs> yes, my hair is down today. So I've been gone for a few days, so it's been a while. So thanks for joining me again, guys. I've missed you guys. So, all right, so I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow, super duper duper short, and I'm going to donate my hair. And I've never ever had my hair long enough to do that. So it's just getting, to, I don't know what to do with long hair. <laughs> I've never had hair this long before. So I figure, you know, let's, it's time to cut it again. It's getting kind of scraggly and weird and I just always have it up. This is actually, I think the first time I've had it down and I just wanted, I have to even go up here to get it all in the frame. But so this is how long it is. It's never been this long before. <laughs> and tomorrow I'm getting it cut like super duper short, like shorter than a pixie, like between a pixie cut and between uh, like 11 from Stranger Things. So <laughs> my haircut is at 11.30 a.m. tomorrow, so we'll see how it goes. But this is uh, the only time I've worn it down like this, so there we go. <laughs> Had to show you guys before, before I chopped it off. So that is the plan. Oh yeah, Patricia, I'll have to take up before and after. I'll make sure to do that at the salon and stuff too, so we'll see. It feels weird uh, for me to have it this long, and it actually feels really weird to have it everywhere. <laughs> I always have it up in a ponytail. So if I have it up in a ponytail, might as well just get it cut, right? <laughs> so that's the plan, guys, wanted to share. So tomorrow I'm getting it cut. However, I may not be on tomorrow uh, like I had planned. So my brother, I I went and visited my family the past couple days and my brother is actually gonna come up uh, on his way out out uh, west. So he will be driving through here and we'll probably be hanging out tomorrow. So uh, I won't be able to share it tomorrow, although I might do a little Facebook Live right after my haircut. So uh, stay tuned for that tomorrow and I will, I'll try and make sure to do that <laughs> if I'm not like too embarrassed uh, with, with people around and stuff. I'll have to do it in the hallway or something. So, all right, because <laughs> I want to share it with you guys tomorrow. So anyway, uh, we may not be doing the live stream uh, in the evening tomorrow, uh, but you might be able to catch me during the day. So we'll be back stitching on the English paper piece project on, on Wednesday, and then, I'll, then I should be here for the rest of the week and forever and ever. <laughs> so, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and get started. It's warm, too. Like, I'm ready to, I don't know, I feel weird. I'm ready to ready to have it trimmed. I'm, I always used to have short hair, so I grew up just with short hair. Uh, so it feels, feels out of place for me a little bit. So, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around. We'll get going today. Oh, Bonnie, you got your English paper piecing templates. Awesome. So you can get going on this too. That's exciting. So I will be here for sure a few more days stitching this. Oh, and I got my Halloween nails going tonight too. <laughs> the only time I'll have like my black and glitter nails. Um, I'm Patricia, I'm not giving it to Locks of Love. I am giving it to the, Bonnie. That's where I'm donating it. So I'm going to donate to Pantene uh, Beautiful, oh gosh, what is it? Beautiful Locks. Uh, they, you know, so doing this, I'm going to start, I'm going to start stitching this on, but I will, um, I'll chit chat, uh, about this while I get going. First of all, I'm just going to, um, I'm going to pin a little bit more down. I think that is working having this middle one pin. So I'm going to just do a couple more here, but I decided to do the Pantene 
beautiful locks. And for some reason right now saying the word locks makes me think that that's not quite what it is. Uh, but um, Pantene beautiful locks because they, first of all, they, they uh, donate to adults, not just kids. Oh, I, <laughs> I did remember candy for trick or treaters. But there's some funny things with hair donation that I was reading um, as I was kind of researching who to go to. And, uh, you know, a lot of places, you know, with locks and lo locks of love, so many people donate to them that they have such, they have a surplus. Um, ooh, this one isn't poking very well. Um, I might throw that one out. But they get so many donations that almost 80% percent of it I was reading gets thrown out and uh, or gets sold. So some some places can some places sell uh, sell the hair that's not like the right length or uh, something like that and uh, some places don't. So the Pantene place um, they work with the American Cancer um, Association. Uh, and, uh, they don't, they don't sell the hair. They don't make any money in theory on, uh, um, on the hair and uh, places that do sell the hair. I mean, this is like minutia, but it drives up prices or it drives, um, down prices of the hair trade and all that. So it, actually it was kind of interesting. They say that if you, um, really like you should actually sell your hair on the market on the hair market and then use that money to donate because it will probably do a little bit more good. So I don't know. It's kind of like this whole can of worms that I was opening. But um, for me, it seemed like the, the Pantene beautiful, oh, beautiful lengths. I think it's Pantene beautiful lengths. I think, I think that, um, that seemed the best to me when I was researching a little bit. Oh, thanks, Deborah. Uh, and that other one that I put up there, uh, I, I put a link to a link to the Pantene beautiful lengths in in um, in my post here. But I also put a link to another place that I found kind of interesting. Their website's not great, but um, you know, as a you know, I used to I do designs. So <laughs> it always freaks me out a little bit when a website isn't good, but. Um, they donate hair, or they, they don't, uh, it's Matter of Trust is what it's called, this other place. And they don't make wigs or anything out of it, but they make hair mats that are used to clean up oil, like clean up oil spills or just oil um, in drains and stuff. And uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. It seems like they use, uh, they can use dog hair, they can use... Uh, any kind of hair and any length really and they actually get kind of too many donations too so a lot of these places get so many donations that they just have to throw it away which seem which is just really interesting too like you know a lot of it's volunteer and they just don't have the ability to receive that much hair uh, but this place if you uh, they take any type of hair in any length but still they get too much of it however they will take hair that is um, like in a ponytail three inches or more because it's used from what I could tell for the outside of the little mats that they make to soak up oil. So kind of like felting. If you guys have ever felted before, felted wool or something like that, it has like this outside um, bit and then they use the other hair, the shorter hair for the inside. So they will always take longer than three inch long hair. So th I thought that was kind of interesting. So they seemed like a place where the hair is actually going to be used. So I don't know. I'm going to do the Pantene uh, Beautiful Lengths this time. Just because, I don't know, that seemed like the best for me when I was doing research and stuff. And then maybe next time. Maybe I'll just donate to uh, just little bits, you know, once it gets, once I, when I need a three inch haircut or something like that, I'll donate those ponytails to 
a matter of trust and clean up some oil spillage. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it was such a weird thing when I started, started researching it. There's a pile of, uh, pile of stuff that I didn't know about, you know, the hair trade. So that was kind of interesting. Yes, felting talk. Oh, how about stabbing myself? Oh gosh, that is, that is something I'm always afraid of. We should try a project uh, with felting. Maybe not human hair, that'd be scary and gross and freak me out, but uh, <laughs> we should do some normal felting, uh, a felting project here sometime. I've done it before. So if you don't know what felting is, uh, if you do it with wool, you can do it with um, any natural hair really, but uh, with wool, because natural hair has almost like little barbs on, especially wool. So when you uh, rub it against each other, then you, um, then it sticks together and gets matted together. Like, you know, if you, and if you wash a sweater, uh, it gets all matted. So you, you can actually control that with a little barbed um, needle. And it's actually really fun. You can sculpt with, with wool, basically. So that'd be kind of fun to try. It's good to know that longer hair that isn't really healthy can still have a use. I didn't know that. Holly, exactly. So that's, I was surprised at that. And um, yeah, because a lot of these places are pretty restrictive in the type of hair that they accept. So with the Pantene one, um, the hair only has to be eight inches long. With a lot of them, it has to be 10 to 12 inches long. And any hair within that ponytail that isn't that long gets thrown out or sold. Um, and, uh, you know, they also don't uh, have, um, a lot of them don't accept gray hair or just a very limited amount of gray hair. And a lot of it don't accept dyed hair. But with, with this uh, matter of trust, they'll, you can donate any length of hair. So even if you're just getting a tr hair trim, um, you can donate it to them. I, it's a little bit of a process to sign up for it because they do get a lot of donations. But I think once you're in, you can just donate whatever you got, even like pet hair and stuff. So that, that was kind of interesting. Your in meds that dry yours out and cut over six inches is a couple years. Oh, and they threw it away. So yeah, Holly, that might be something to look into the matter of matter of trust. And I, I did put a link to it in the in the post here. Um, cause now that I've been thinking about it more, I'm like, you know, I'm not doing anything with the hair. I'd rather it be helpful than be thrown out. So now, and you know, doing more research now I'm thinking, yeah, that matter of trust thing, just anytime I'm cutting my hair, you know, you put in a bag and, and send it to them. Um, the stuff that's not long, the three inches or longer, they use it for the mats because it's longer. So I suspect it's easier to hold in the contents of the mats, which is the shorter hair, but they'll also use short hair. You can donate, um, like pantyhose and stuff to them too, because they'll fill pantyhose legs with hair. And that's what they'll use for oil spills. They'll go out and the hair will soak up oil. And, uh, you know, it'll stay within the, these pantyhose. So you can actually donate pantyhose legs, tights legs to, to this place. It's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, their website is crazy difficult to navigate, um, <laughs> which is a huge bummer because it was, it's, it's pretty interesting once you start reading through some of the stuff. But yeah, interesting, interesting digging into it more. So yeah, if you do want to donate hair. Uh, there are other places, you know, it won't be turned into a wig or anything, but it would, it, it's still, you know, helpful, helpful for the greater good. <laughs> so man, that's a rabbit hole of Googling <laughs> to get sucked into though. Uh, learning about, um, the different places to donate and the pros and cons of it all. And you know, what's really going on behind the scenes a little bit and pretty interesting, but yeah. So that is tomorrow's plan. I've never done it before. Um, my hair has never been long enough to do it before, but yeah, now that I found out about that other place, um, 
that I can donate shorter hair, any hair really, I think, uh, I think that'd be fun to try. Just keep growing it and donate it. Your granddaughter just cut your hair and said, oh, uh, with my vet to bed health, I would be used, you, my hair. So, oh, you just tossed it Thursday. Yeah. So that's the thing. It's, that's, that's the thing with all these wig places. So there's so, or not wig places, but the, the places that turn into wig, wigs, like locks of love and, and, um, you know, the Pantene place. It's so specific. That's why I thought it was pretty cool. Um, to find this other place that, you know, it's not turning into a wig, but it's still, still useful. Oh, and, and Rosalie, I saw your, your hair as well. And I'm telling you, that is totally exactly the cut I'm going for. <laughs> so we're totally going to be like twinsies on the hair, but that is totally the, the haircut. I, uh, I downloaded some photos from the interwebs and, uh, I'll bring those to show the hair person and, uh, We'll see how it goes, but like how how you cut it is that's that's what I'm going for, just that kind of short, uh, but but the same length short. Um, I don't want like where it's super short on the sides and then longish on top. I want it kind of all a similar length. Oh, good, Carla. I'm glad you like my uh, my email update on the bundle. Uh, the so yeah. So if you guys ordered one of the embroidery supplies bundles. From me I, I sent a little email update about it today so if you didn't get that email let me know because I want to make sure that I have you on on that list so you can get updates and I'm pretty sure everyone's on but sometimes it rejects emails like if it thinks I'm spam or something like that I know Lucy so uh the last time I got my hair cut was a year, well, about a year and a half ago. It was on my birthday uh, that couple of years ago, well, a year and a half ago, when um, when my husband and I went to New York. That's the last time I got it cut. And uh, I it was still pretty long at that point. So it was, it was you know, about short, shoulder length at that point. So from going into shoulder length, you know, to where it is now was about a year and a half. So yeah, it's going super duper short to where it is right now. It'll probably take like three and a half years, like literally. Oh, you asked for a mohawk and the daughter in law said no, but happy with how she did. Oh, that's good, Rosalie. Yeah, I, I'm totally, that would be fun, a little mohawk. But I, I'm getting it pretty much exactly like how, how yours turned out. I think it's going to be fun. And yeah, maybe it'll be a little little chillier for winter, but I'm thinking it's going to be nicer because I won't get my hair caught in my coats or, you know, sometimes when I wear like a hat, my hair will get kind of almost felted, uh, kind of like what we were just talking, like it'll just, it'll like start getting like little dreadlocks in sort of. And it's just annoying and it, yeah, just getting caught in my coat. So I think having it super short for winter is going to be fun. And I haven't had it short in a long time, like super short, just because I always, I grew up with it short and uh, I don't know, I always felt like I could never get it to that long, that long stage. Um, so now that it was long, I just kind of left it like that for a while just because just to experience it, but I, I haven't really experienced it because I keep putting it up. I don't, I just, I don't know. I don't put in the effort for long hair, so we'll see. <laughs> Time to just chop it down again. It'll be weird. I'm a little nervous to get just it, it that short, but I think it'll, I think it'll be nice. And I'm glad that I can do something with the hair afterwards. All right, I think I'm, I'm almost done with this thread. I'm going to try and get to kind of like maybe in the middle over here. And we'll see how it goes. We'll be on this for a few more days, this hand stitching. Oh, you two, you two had Twiggy haircuts, but you wouldn't know. Oh, Twiggy is actually, or a Twiggy lookalike. I think it's actually Twiggy. Patricia is one of my, um, I, I'm going to show you guys my hair inspiration picks. 
if you guys can see, I'll, I'll show you in a sec here. Um, but I think that's one of my uh, hair inspiration picks. Okay, so I got it. I got it loading here. Yeah. So all right. So here we go. These are my inspiration picks. So that's pretty short. Maybe not so short on the sides there. And and there we go. That's that's the Twiggy shot. <laughs> I'm actually not sure if that's actually Twiggy or a model that looks just like her. But that's that's the other hair. And uh, I think I have a few more photos. Yep. So here's here's the other pics. So short, short, I think it's going to be nice. Just kind of natural with not like a ton of product and stuff in just because I don't do anything with my hair. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> That's a little preview. We'll see if it's like that. Can you, can you show a close up when you knot after threading your needle? Oh, sure. I can do that for sure. So I will, um, I'm finishing, once I finish this thread, I'll show you how I do my knot. So Patty, how I do my knot is... I don't know, not, I, I need to learn a, a new way of doing the little knot. I've seen some people just roll the end and uh, then they have like a perfect little knot at the end of their thread and I have not quite figured out and mastered that. So I, I'm doing the knots in this other way, but I will, I'll definitely show you. I'm doing it kind of like doing a, a French knot by wrapping it around. Um, the needle a few times, but I will for sure show you. So I'm just going to get towards the middle here, which I think is a little bit better stopping point than right on the corner. I want to be able to tuck in, tuck in these little uh, dog ears yet. Oop, and a little fuzzle. Tuck that under too. There we go. Alrighty. It's like six more stitches or so. I considered getting it dyed too, but um, or a few people asked about dyeing because the, the place that I'm getting it at, the haircut place does a lot of just like really interesting dyeing, like really painterly hair dyeing and stuff. But I think with hair that short, I think I'll just leave it as is because it'll just grow out right away. I don't know. Used to dye my hair a lot too, but I haven't done that in probably over a decade. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do one more and then we'll tie a little knot here. So I'm just going to go around this edge one more time. Yeah, my thread's just getting a little beat up. It's time to time to start fresh. It's just getting too kinked up. All right, let's flip it around. It's kind of fun to see all the little stitches. So we're, you know, a quarter of the length, uh, quarter of the ways finished here. And I thought about quilting it a little bit more. I've actually been reading up. <laughs> this is what I do. I study. I study like how to do these things. But I've been reading up on machine free motion quilting. And this actually would have been a really fun project to test it with. But uh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to not quilt this. I'm just going to finish this as the pillow and worry about quilting with some of these next projects. But I was definitely tempted. I know we, we talked about, am I going to quilt this or put batting in it? And I think for this particular project, we're just going to leave it as flat fabric like this. Um, okay, where, where was I? So we have gone this far. So from here to here, um, I think we can get quite a ways yet tonight. So this might only take like two more days to do. And then we'll start putting it into a pillow. So, all right, I'm 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 threading it right off the spool. Okay. Getting a, a length there. Again, for needle turn, you don't want a huge amount of thread because it'll just keep getting 
kinked and it'll just be a whole lot easier to use shorter. So the way I'm, I've been doing my knots is I've been um, kind of making a loop. So here's the end of my thread. It might be a little difficult to see, but I, I have one end of the thread and then the needle and I'm kind of pointing them towards each other. So I'm pointing the thread uh, towards the needle and then I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm holding the thread in that hand. So I've kind of completed a loop here. And then I'm just wrapping the thread a bunch of times around my needle. Then I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold all those loops like that. And I'm going to pull the needle. I'm really um, holding those pretty tightly. I'm going to pull my whole needle through all the thread through. And that is going to make a knot made out of, out of all those loops there and just pull it tight. So I, I did a bunch of loops just so the knot could be a little bit bigger. I don't want the knot too small because I don't want it to be pulled through the fabric. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not sure if that's a good idea to do it this way or not, but it's it's the current state of the state, Patty, <laughs> of how I'm doing doing my my knots there. I'll, I'll um, once I'm done with this thread, I'll, um, if we're still going tonight yet, then I'll, I'll show you again up close. All right, so starting a stitch length from where I left off, going to go around that spot one more time. Just to kind of, oop, sorry guys, I'm totally missing tons of content, con tons of uh, comments. Sorry, let me read through these quick Sometimes if I uh, touch the screen, then, then my contents don't go further. Oh, your hair was red forever, Rosalie. That's, that's how mine was too. So I'm a little nervous about going red again, just because that's what I always used to do. Yes, that's sweet. Okay, Patricia, see ya. Ah, I knew it was up. Oh, it's Mia Farrow. It's not Twiggy. Okay. I'm just close, but no cigar, I suppose. Oh, I used to get that haircut, Patricia. Oh, funny. Okay, Connie, you didn't get an email. I'm gonna, I'll look into that. Okay, there, now I'm caught up to date. Sorry, guys. I, I didn't realize I was missing all your, all your comments. Oh, so Robin, this is called a quilter's knot. Okay, well, that's cool. I feel good about that. Cannot get the other way. Um, oh, you tried and failed where you just um, do the thing with your little finger like that. Yeah, that, that I'm not very good at. That I haven't mastered. I've tried a few times. I don't know. I have more control over doing it than twisting it around the needle way. The trick is you want, um, just like a French knot, you want uh, the end pointed towards the needle. You don't want them pointed the same direction because then you won't get a, get, get a knot. Well, that's how you make a knot, almost. All right, get this little corner done. There's a little thread popping out, but I think I can tuck it in. So I'm still trying to really keep this flat because it's really could easily start trying to scrunch this back fabric in. So I'm just kind of checking every once in a while. It made maybe blooped a little bit here. But that's why I cut my fabric a little bit bigger so that if it gets um, too bunched up, um, I'll have enough to cut it down to the right size. But I'm definitely paying attention and um, trying to get it so, so I don't like get too much of the back fabric scrunch underneath. Trying to hold it flat, hold both pieces flat against each other. I think the pin's helping a little bit. But yeah, so everything under this, this edge, I'm trying to keep my fabric flat, even though I'm bunching it up with my hand here. You know, and with the long hair, I'm just sick of hair being everywhere. <laughs> That's kind of a new phenomenon for me. Uh, just hair everywhere, long hair everywhere. 
can't make uh, can't vacuum enough. Yeah, we're cruising along on this. It feels like I haven't done it forever again. It's so funny, just a couple days away and uh, gets tough again. It was definitely nice to visit visit family though. It could, Bonnie, it could use a little bit more glue. I, I'm still on enough on the edges. Uh, like this is attached, this is attached, it's just, oh, up, up here it's attached. This one's not attached all that well, but I think from the sides being uh, attached well enough, I think we're going to be okay with just that small little edge. But yeah, if it comes up any more than what it is now, I'll definitely put a few more dabs of glue on. And again, I'm only using dab, I'm only using glue because... I know I'm going to be, I'm stitching it on like right away. If this is a project that I knew was going to be around forever, I would, I would consider basting it a little bit differently. Like maybe stitching it down first with some, with some thread instead of relying on this glue. But I think for us, it's going to be just fine. Yeah, definitely a little floppy. Um, I think it's still, still going to be manageable. And remember, if you are using glue, just make sure to get it on the seam allowance. Don't, don't get it like within the back of the fabric because you don't want it to look like there's a little glue dot holding down your fabric. You want the whole thing to kind of float off the edge. So by putting it on the seam allowance, it's, um, it's that extra layer of fabric. So the layer above the seam allowance is still gonna float, float a little bit. I think that's kind of what gives like vintage needle turn applique its, it's look is that kind of floating, floating applique look. And a lot of times, so this is one of the things I read, I, you know, I'm trying to learn more about machine quilting or, um, well, machine quilting, but free motion quilting too. And uh, traditionally what, um, there's a, something you can do with uh, quilting called echoing, where you just go and around, you go around and around a shape. So like with little lines, so it kind of echoes like a ripple, ripple in the water. Um, it's from that point you get all those little lines. So that's echoing in quilting. A lot of you I'm sure know that already, but I'm learning. And uh, a traditional look with applique and needle turn applique like this is to just echo around around the, the applique, which also kind of puffs out the applique even more to make it float up even more. Because all this, the, the quilting holds down the rest of the, the quilt, like squishes it, which allows the applique to kind of look as if it's puffed up more. Kind of fun. I'm hoping to, that we can try some of that when we um, do all the machine free motion quilting that we're going to try and do. Oh, you've been practicing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm hoping... So my main... My main thing with the, the project coming up, uh, the Charming Chevrons quilt by Krista Quilts. Oh yeah, Krista Watson. So yes, yeah, so Krista Watson, we're, Lucy, we are going to be working on her, her pattern coming up, the Charming Chevrons, and I have her book on machine quilting as well. So we are going to use her book and that pattern to just learn how to, how to free motion quilt. And, and quilt in general. So that that's the plan. I'm going to use that, uh, that her cute little chevron quilt. I'm going to try and do quilt different designs in each chevron. Oh, you just got the pattern. Awesome, Lucy. But yeah, I'm going to try and like with each stripe of chevrons, use each stripe as a practice area for machine quilting. And I'm sure there'll be like, you know, how can we make this work better? Like it's, it's, 
you know, too bulky here, or, you know, our stitches are looking funny, how do we improve that? So I'm, I'm going to use the whole thing as a test quilt. So I'm sure there'll be a whole pile of ro rows of those chevrons that look just hideous, uh, but my hope is that by the time we get done with the chevrons, it's it's going to be all good, right? <laughs> or at least show improvement, right? So, oh, I got a little funny knot in here. Um, I'm hoping by the time we're done, it'll be uh, a showcase of improvement. How about that? <laughs> That's what I'm hoping, that it will show, oh, hey, this started out really bad, but look at where it got to the end. A showcase of progress. So that's that's the project I'm really gonna focus on the the, the uh, free motion quilting. And you know we have the I Love Home quilt. We'll be doing block. We'll be starting block four of that soon, and then in December we'll be doing the borders and uh, uh, yeah, just all the cute borders and sashing and stuff on that quilt. I don't know if I will finish quilting it uh, right away. So my thought on that is maybe we'll learn how to free motion quilt a little bit better with the chevron quilt and then have the like, you know, we talked about the finish the thing spring. Uh, maybe at that point we go back to the I love home quilt and quilt it with our newfound knowledge <laughs> and practice of free motion quilting and uh, dig into that a little bit more because I think we can do some fun things with the blocks, maybe even quilting, machine quilting within the blocks, like doing that echo quilting around the houses um, and the little, the little flowers and hearts and stuff. That might be kind of interesting because that freaks me out. That totally scares me to quilt within like applique shapes like that and uh and embroidery so that might be a good challenge <laughs> and uh we have all that cute sashing in in that quilt sashing is just the the fun little borders in between blocks so those little borders we could really play with free motion quilting too i'm thinking so my plan is to be an expert quilter <laughs> by the end of the chevron quilt, which, you know, is crazy talk, but I'm hoping to be better than I am now. And uh, then maybe we can, we can, uh, you know, the fruits of that labor can be used on the, the, to finish the I Love Home quilt. So that's, that's kind of what I was pondering today. And I think, I think that might be a good, good idea. So we'll see how that goes. I think that's a good plan though. Then we can get started, started on that project sooner too, which I'm itching to get at. So yeah, so just uh, November, ooh, six. Six is the first Monday, I think, of November. So November 6th is when we'll do block four start block four of the I Love Home quilt. The last block, block four is the last one. Oh, Patricia, no, that's what we're talking about, echo quilting. So that's what I wanna try. I wanna, I wanna try echo quilting maybe with, with the embroidery and the applique where you go around and around. Uh, so November 6th, we'll start block four, which is the last block of the I Love Home quilt. Then um, on uh, November 20th, we will be doing the, uh, I'm trying to grab it, the Hemlock Forest Friends Unicorn from Heidi Boyd. This is uh, just going to be a quick, cute, little stuffed animal project. Kind of a palette cleanser from all the big projects that we've been doing. We'll be starting that on November 20th. I think it'd be like a really cute, uh, really cute gift, that little unicorn too. So that we'll be doing on November 20th. I think that'll probably take about a week. And then December will start, if you can believe it or not, um, already. And we will be starting the sashing and the borders for the I Live Home quilt. And once we get done with that, that's when we will start the chevron quilt. So probably, probably early January. <laughs> 
late December, early January for, actually probably early January because I wanna try and fit, fit in another uh, little embroidery project. We talked about doing the embroidery where we color it in with uh, crayons and stuff beforehand. I wanna fit that in before, before the end of the year. So uh, another short little fun project. So that is what's coming up. And again, I will be sending an email out about this soon. I just, you know, being gone, I, I haven't gotten a chance to, to write it all up yet. But that is the plan. If you saw the wool applique turkey little quilt I posted. Oh, it had an echo quilt, quilting around the turkey and foliage. Oh, I'll, I'll check that out again. Um, been hand, hand echo quilting for years. Oh, fun. I love that. I would like to do more of that too. More hand quilting. I just think it's relaxing. I like doing the, the tied quilts. That's, you know, a version of hand quilting. But some, some stitching with, no, by hand would be nice. All right, got another corner. Cruising along. I think if we can get to here, then we're halfway, which is great. See if we get there tonight. It's getting late already. The hubs might come for my haircut too. It's it's uh, the place I'm getting it cut. There's a coffee shop in the same building and stuff, and and he likes working. You know, sometimes he likes working in a coffee shop, so he likes working at that particular one, and uh, so he might hang out and work while I get my haircut. <laughs> Should be kind of fun. Get get a coffee, then my hair is cut. That makes it a good day, right? Maybe people will be dressed up in Halloween costumes and stuff. That'd be fun. And then my brother comes tonight or tomorrow night. Uh, so, like I said, I, I probably won't be on tomorrow evening because my brother is is coming up. We'll probably go out to eat somewhere and, or we'll be, uh, the chicken treaters are, are, uh, maybe we'll get a few of them popping in. We'll see. We don't usually get too many trick or treaters, but we did buy candy this year. Barely any, but enough. <laughs> but yeah. So, um, oh, he could do the high, the live video of my hair cut. Oh man. I don't know. I'll definitely try and do, um, a live stream when I'm done with it. Maybe a little bit before, or you know, probably just probably just when I'm done. So we'll see. But I, I definitely want to share with you because I won't be on in the evening. Are you dressing up too? I am not dressing up, Patricia. The most I've, I'm dressing up is I, I painted my nails uh, black with with some sparkles. I, I, that's that's the best I'm gonna do, which is pretty sad, I know, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Too much work for, I don't know. Uh, I think it's really fun though. I love, I love looking at costumes and seeing people's creativity and everything. It's just, it's awesome. And I used to uh, be a whole lot bigger into it, but I don't know. I think I just got, just got busy. Your little doggies want out. Oh, <laughs> have a great night, Holly. Thanks for joining. All right, I think we don't have that much more thread, so I think I'll go up again to like a middle straightaway area again, and um, I'll stop it. But I, I think I'll start another one tonight. We might not get very far, but um, I think we have a little bit more time tonight to get a little farther in this. You know, the farther we get, the closer we are to finishing it. So I'd like, I'd like that. I do want to do some decorative -y little things for the edge of the pillow and the back a little bit. So that will take a little more time than just making, you know, a simple envelope pillowcase. My thread slid off of the needle again, right when I was going to tie it into a knot. You see your post photo, you dressed up as a scarecrow. Oh, for funny. Oh, and you visited a nursing home and answered the door for trick-or-treaters. Oh, Patricia, that's so cute. Oh, I love that. Oh, I'll have to, um, I'll have to check that out for fun. 
All right, I'm going to loop it around here again, and this will be my last stitch with this thread. Oops, didn't aim very well. I'm using this really bent needle on this still, but it seems to be working just fine. Okay, tie a little knot here. Cruising on this tonight. When I worked um, at the greeting card company uh, before getting more involved with Penguin and Fish, uh, I dressed up there um, every year. The kids loved it. Oh, you had a blackbird sitting on your shoulder. Oh man, I love that. We always used to make our costumes when we were little. Actually, I think we've made, I, now that I think of it, I don't think I've ever purchased a costume. <laughs> It was, uh, we we always made our costumes. All right, I'm going to take this guy out. I don't think we need him there anymore because we are, we're attached all, all around there. Sometimes it makes like those big holes and I want to avoid that as much as I can. Okay, more thread. Let's get that going. Hey, Alice, thanks for joining. Man, this is getting pretty slim, this this uh, orophil. Still tons of thread on there, but it's a lot less than there used to be. That's good. That means we're making stuff, right? Okay. So again, I am uh, pointing the... Uh, let's see if we can see a little bit more in the purple. I'm pointing the end of the thread towards the needle, so I'm kind of completing the loop, and I'm going to hold the end of that thread so we're making like a continuous loop. Then I want to wrap it around a few times. The more times you wrap, the bigger your knot will be. I'm going to just hold all those little loops on my um, needle like that. And we're going to pull the needle through. And I'm still going to hold all those loops while all the rest of the thread gets pulled through. And here's, here's the last little bit there. You can see the loops and I'm just gonna keep pulling and there we go. That's a little knot again. Oh, thanks Alice. Yeah, so he's actually coming up tomorrow, which is awesome. So I get to see him again. Um, he is on his way to Oregon for ski season in, in the US. Just coming back from Australia. So he's headed out tomorrow to come see us and then I think he's meeting up with a friend and uh, who's kind of going out to the same area and happened to be happened to be coming this way so uh, I think they'll be caravanning or something so he'll be with us overnight so I get to see him again I'm so excited but yeah so again I won't be here tomorrow night um, but I will I will share I will, uh, I'll, I'll Facebook live after my haircut <laughs> uh, for some show and tell. All right, I'm almost done with this little guy. Just trying to get that point. Uh, Lucy, he runs, um, he's kind of in charge of snow cats and building terrain parks for, for ski hills. So like where they do all the, the moguls, um, and, and all that he, he builds those. So a snow cat, I don't know if you know, oh, yep. He will be bad. Oh, he's going to be at Mount Hood. Sue. So uh, he'll be at Mount Hood making moguls and other terrain park, uh, the, the rails and, and all that stuff. So he gets to drive one of those giant tractor looking things with the tank, the tank uh, tread things. What are those called? Train, I don't know, the tracks, those like, uh, yep, he grooms the hills. The um, But he specifically, he specifically grooms the hills to make, um, to make all those, you know, fancy 
jumps and um, the things that like snowboarders and, and skiers can, you know, they'll go on that metal rail like they're going down, um, you know, the railing of a of stairs sort of. Uh, he'll he'll like weld and build those and stuff too. And so he's building those things and, and maintaining maintaining them. And, you know, for photo shoots, he'll, you know, sometimes magazines will come and want to do photo shoots of that stuff and he'll build custom things for them or for big races and uh, all that sort of stuff. Yep, moguls. He'll make all those. We just got a lesson in moguls <laughs> when we were home and asking him tons of, of questions because, you know, we're curious. So I've had Moguls 101 now <laughs> and how to make them. It's, it's pretty fascinating and, you know, a vocabulary all their own for just the types of snow and, and uh, I don't know, pretty dang fascinating having to deal with weather and uh, sometimes the it's it's too sloshy at the top so they got to do the moguls at the bottom but then once the sun comes out and melts it a little and freezes it again or whatever then they can go back up and finish the moguls like all these little things that are affected uh, or just just these details that you wouldn't you wouldn't think about you know it's just pretty fascinating so he's going out to do that. Oh, you're a skier in Loud Mogos. Oh, that's awesome. Yep, so he does all that terrain park stuff. And has like a, has a, a crew and stuff, I think, that he manages a little bit. Snow science. Oh gosh. Yeah. So last time we got a lesson in snowflakes and how, and, um, when they make snow and, and how all that works, but dang, there's, yeah, there's definitely some snow science there for sure. Pretty dang fascinating. <laughs> Whole pile of stuff that you just wouldn't even know to think about. Just fascinating. It's more than just like lawn mowing. You know, you're not just, there's, there's a whole lot to it. It's pretty interesting. Alrighty, let's turn here. We'll go for a few more minutes. If we get up to here, then we've hit the halfway point, so maybe we can get that far. Oh man, you skied every day. Yeah, so he'll, he'll work late at night. So he works over, over the night. And, and I, I got a ride with him in the cat once in one of those big, uh, big, you know, tank machines. And I'm telling you, it's like being on the moon. <laughs> oh, thanks, Alice. Alice, uh, I love your book. The octopus is adorable. Oh, you're sweet. Does he miss summer? I think he's starting to miss summer a little bit more. Um, I think he was considering well, I don't know. It's it's kind of up in the air, but I think I think he uh, I think he's starting to want a summer again. I'm not sure, but it seems a little hinted that he might want summer again. <laughs> but yeah, I think he's had like I think he said this is going to be his twentieth season, and he's had something like fourteen straight seasons so that's seven years straight of like no summer <laughs> I mean he'll have a little time he has a little time off in between seasons you know like a month or so so he'll get a little taste of spring and fall uh and a little summer depending where he's at but yeah I don't know I don't think I'd, I'd be able to do it Ugh, I'm already freaking out that it's getting colder I do like having seasons, but man, cold all the time, I just, that just sounds not fun. This is relaxing. I'm, I just really like doing this needle uh, just by hand, this applicating by hand here. And I don't think it's taking forever. I mean, yeah, it's taking a few hours. It's going to take us a few days here, but, you know, we went, we went like a whole uh, section here. 
He's uh, two years younger than me, so just shy of two years younger by a couple months. So about two years. And then my other brother is about six years younger than me. I am the oldest, and it's the three of us. All right, square number one is done. I'm just trying to, I keep laying it down because I want to make sure that my back is, is flat still. Oh, and if you guys, I know I've been gone for a little while. If, if you guys, um, ha, I know a few of you have emailed me. I, I, and, you know, with, with the Penguin Fish Crafters group, I am, uh, uh, you can, I'm, I'm still emailing back. I haven't forgot about your um, questions and, and everything. So I will be working on that this week. So if you're waiting for something for me, I will, uh, I'll be uh, getting to it soon. So sorry for the delay. Ooh, it's supposed to be a very intense winter. Mount Hood should be great this year. Oh, that's good. Yeah, we need to, it'd be fun to go out there this year. We didn't make it last year. But it's nice because, you know, he can go to Portland and stuff, uh, which is lovely. A lot of Minnesota transplants there and vice versa. I think the more snow for him, the better. Almost got a little knot in here. All right, I'm just gonna crawl up this blue guy a little and then we'll call it an evening, I think. Oh, you're 45 minutes around here. Oh, that's awesome. See, oh, you see it out of the front windows. Oh, wow, that's cool. How funny. Yep, that's where he'll be. Okay, almost done with this guy. Oh yeah, oh my gosh. he He's like an artist when it comes to photography and, and stuff too. So he has a nice camera. And even just with, with the iPhone and stuff, he takes, uh, my brother, such beautiful, beautiful photos. And he'll take photos of like sunrises up on the hill where all the snow is pink and... Uh, you know, he'll go, he just showed us p pictures of him camping up on the mountain and, you know, where they had to carve out a little area uh, for their tent to block like wind and all that up on this mountain. And it, just the photos from there and stuff are just crazy gorgeous. Oh, Alice, so, oh, that's good, good to hear. So Alice said that she bought some floss some DMC floss and it, and it, the quality of the DMC is really making a difference compared to the other floss that she had. That's awesome. Oh, and an organizer. Nice. That's one of my favorite things, just organizing thread. Uh, the floss, I did that little time lapse video of me organizing the floss. I was like, oh, I'll just do this quick, but it took like, um, an hour to do, an hour to organize it all. All right, I think I'm gonna stop right there for the night, right before I get to this point that I gotta tuck in. He he doesn't really post his photos. We're trying to convince him to start posting it, Lucy. So, so we'll see, maybe we can convince him <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, he should, he needs to, to post them, I think. Well, he doesn't need to, but I think he should. All right, uh, I'm going to flip you guys around and we'll finish it up. But we got pretty far, I think. So this is where we started. We, I think we got, we started around here tonight. But all in all, we got just about, we went all the way up here. So we got just about halfway done tonight. 
So I'm thinking, you know, on Wednesday, I won't be here tomorrow, but on Wednesday, we should get close to finishing this guy. Um, maybe we'll even stay a little bit longer just to finish it up, like an extra 10 minutes or so. And then we'll be making this pillow yet this week. So I'm stoked about that. Okay, I'm gonna flip you guys and we will finish it up. Yes, happy Halloween to everyone uh, for tomorrow as well. Okay, again, this is my longest my hair has ever been. This is <laughs> this is what will be getting cut off tomorrow. So we'll we'll see how it goes, and I'll be sure to share when I'm done. I think I'm gonna have them to get more hair. Woo! falling over to get more hair you can have it like rubber band up here and then you get a little bit longer so I think I'll do that so I'll have like weird hair bits all over um not just a ponytail I'm not going to just do a ponytail since I am getting it cut short I'll have them you know do it up here too so there's some longer pieces but yep yep goodbye hair this is it <laughs> awesome so here we go guys again uh we are almost halfway around uh, stitching that on. I think it looks awesome on that purple. Uh, I'm excited to get it in the pillow. So thanks again. I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies and it will stay here on Facebook. And again, I'll get back to all your emails and comments and everything tomorrow. Uh, I do, I actually usually braid it. Uh, I either braid it or have it up in a ponytail. This is the only time really that I've, it's in, in like the past year and a half, like literally that I've had it down. It's <laughs> so it's kind of surprising to me how long it is too. I, I haven't, I haven't had it down like this. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> crazy. So short hair next time. All right, guys, I will see you on, on Wednesday. And again, I'll pop in tomorrow in the afternoon uh, to show the hairs. <laughs> so see you later, guys. Have a great night.